I remember when my house was destroyed by my own flame they had received. I remember when my figure was sold to fulfill my offspring's greed. I remember when my descendants forgot me. I remember never being announced deceased, only forgotten. Hung by a noose by my own, I refuse to forget what it is to be alive. I let them believe I cease to thrive, but only for the meantime. So my understanding of Hikuleo is that she is one badass goddess. <laughs> she um, is my favourite god or goddess of um, in Tongan mythology only because she's a female. Um, you know, we've got all our Maui's, our Tangaloa's, etc, etc. They're all male, but here is a female goddess that, you know, our girls can look up to. I guess with all myths and legends, they sort of, um, it's sort of like a game of Chinese whispers where like details and stuff get mangled as the story gets passed down. But yeah, I would come to figure out that Hikuleo was um, a part of the main, um, the main three gods of, of the Tongan pantheon and her parents who were like um, these primordial energies of like um, seaweed and soil, I guess, um, birthed her and anointed her um, their bele, which in Tongan culture is like your, your, your golden amongst golden child. Um, they had offered her the first land that they made, which was the island Atta, and another piece of land named Tonga Mama'o. Um, and then they had more children. Tonga Loa and Maui were both headstrong, and I guess in that they felt entitled to all of that land and to everything. Tonga Loa had domain over the Langi, and Maui had domain over the land, um, and they had bounded Hikoleo to um, Bulotu with a kafa. There is still this controversy over the gender of Hikuleo. In some accounts, uh, Hikuleo is male. In other accounts, Hikuleo is female. Really, the confusion around her gender comes from uh, our, our, I wouldn't say our colonizers, because I guess Tongan people were complicit in like, in, 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 in the removal of their culture and whatnot. So missionaries and those types of influences coming in and being really unsettled and um, uncomfortable with the idea of a deity being a woman, you know? And I guess um, be because of, because of like the, the gender roles that they had already established in their society, them coming into our society and seeing um, a statue, a female statue erected everywhere and, and being prayed to, um, looked like, looked horrible, looked hedonistic. These figurines, so there's two made from wood, one made from ivory, and they're just probably about this big, uh, made from door wood, iron wood, and it's just a figure of a female. And they all look quite similar. Um, there's one in the cabinets just over there in Tonga. Um, she's sitting faite, so she put her legs to the side. I think they were either made with axes and adzes, so in Tonga we call that doki, and then um, shells were used to sort of smooth out and polish them. So this was made all before any sort of metals or anything were introduced to Tonga. King George the Bold I hung all our goddesses. When he embraced Christianity, he ordered the destru destruction of all the god houses. Um, any figurines, any tamapua as they were referred to, were hung and destroyed. Um, the one in our collection, when we collected it, had a noose around her neck. It was just made of gaffa, but apparently from the label it says that she was hung in Ha'apai, in Lifuka by the king, when he embraced Christianity and I think maybe the missionaries had cut her down and a few others just to bring back. 
And so the story goes that when Hikoleo finally breaks free from the kafa that she's been bound by and returns to the world, she'll destroy everything. Her anger will encapsulate the world in fire and everything will burn. Okay, so Nukolofa was uh, going through change. Um, Tonga was going through a change where um, the people wanted, or some people wanted to uh, change in the, um, the political system, uh, wanting to be more democratic. So um, in those struggles, there was, a, a, I guess, a, a group of people that wanted to burn down um, you know, some buildings in Nukolofa. So for me, it was kind of tough times then, and I was looking at, you know, how could, how could we do that to, our, you know, our country? So looking at the Hikuleo, looking at the pre-Christian times, um, you know, there's a juggle. I think that the painting uh, Bauli, the one that you, uh, that's in Mangalia Art Centre, I think that was the most um, important painting at the time, um, because although we're like 99% Christian. Uh, the burning of Mukolofa sort of um, opened up um, sort of like a, a past, a dark past that we that we also have. And I use it also for, for personal uh, reference because um, myself, you know, growing up here in Aotearoa, you, you, you're, you're, you're Christian also, you're still um, looking into Tongan, um, sort of Tongan uh, beliefs, old beliefs, and you sort of live with both. It's not just one. It's who we are, it's our identity, it's our past. Because Hikuleo is not quite a popular goddess. Um, I found when our communities came in, a lot of them didn't really know who she was. And I found growing up with my name, being named after her, that um, people were always asking me, like, who, what's, what's Hikuleo? How do, you, how do you say it? What is it? Is it a she? Like, are you named after someone? And then having to explain, like, oh, it's a goddess, like an old pre-Christian goddess is from Tonga. I'm named after her, and this is what she does. This is, you know, the sort of thing she do. I think that's important to young Tongan people because they're the most confused. Um, we live in diaspora. We live, I mean, sure, it's three hours away, like, three hours away on a plane, but we live so far away from our homelands. And, you know, um, the, um, the, the sort of connections that we sort of are expected to have to our bodies and to, to our minds um, are, are, are not intrinsic because we sit in between two worlds constantly. Um, and it's not a matter of being able to like walk to the store and be like, hey, fefe ake, saipe, and you know, and just like have like, um, have your culture roll off your tongue. I feel like Hikoleo's story would do more to empower young Tongan peoples than anything because, um, because I think it speaks to the amount of strength and resilience Tongan people have. I mean, she, she's been locked away in the spiritual homeland for like an eternity and she's still doing her shit, you know, she's, she's still out here. Um, she just represents a very strong woman something I aspire to be. She you know, ruled the underworld, she ruled Tonga, she was a keeper of knowledge and um, yeah, I just aspire to be as strong and badass as she was. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.